Welcome back uh, to the Pi Chain Conference. I am so excited to welcome Chris, my dear colleague. As you can see, I have my ape swag on, so give it up for Chris from Apeworks. Hi, uh, thank you so much for having me. Yes, it has been a pleasure to be here. So I've been watching all the other streams and I've been enjoying all the different little talks. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's get into it. So hi, GMGM. GM. My, uh, my name is Chris. I'm here to teach a little bit about ApeWorks and thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with me. Um, just a little shout out. Uh, today is Melissa's one year work anniversary, and it's been a huge pleasure uh, to support you in our work. So thank you so much for like, and seeing me through this whole thing. Thank you. <laughs> so a little bit about me. Uh, so I started with uh, working out in uh, ApeWorks about a year ago, just a little bit before um, Melissa. And um, then we then I have a little bit of a mission statement that I wanted to talk about about ApeWorks. And then and then the mission statement will follow through with the features of Ape. And then um, I want to show you where to go through and learn all of this stuff. So a little bit about me. I'm a half engineer and half DGen, so full time uh, software engineer and doing all these crazy things. And I'm here to talk about the framework that we work together on. I specialize in the education content for our team. For example, when I don't understand something in our framework, we get good questions. And I'm trying to make solutions and try to turn that feedback into tutorials for everyone to, to learn about. Uh, so I essentially make dumb questions into DIY, just like commercial, like those commercials with the slogan, there has to be a better way. And uh, feel free to um, ask any of the questions that you would like, um, especially the questions about my photos, because there's always a story behind them. So, for example, the one on the top left is me and Patrick in Paris. And I was it was a pleasure to meet him for the first time because he works at Chain, Chainlink Labs. And uh, it's always uh, informative to talk to him. So our mission statement, ApeWorks, uh, Ape Framework is an easy to use, beginner friendly Web3 development tool. Users can compile, test, interact with smart contracts all in one command line, one line, uh, command line session. Ape supports multiple contract languages, chains, including non-EVM chains such as StarkNet. Uh, many of you have already seen the StarkNet in the presentation uh, from Larry. He's a he's a really smart guy. So, what does this all mean? Uh, it means that all of the keywords that were in our mission statements is a feature and it works. So um, let's uh, let's get right into it. Um, ApeWorks has a plugin modular system that allows a user to plug and play as they choose. We have a network provider and compiler plugins to cater to all your needs. And so just by the look of this, here are some of the most popular plugins that we have support for. And, uh, but this does not include any of our community written plugins. I know that some people have written documentations, uh, some really smart plugins for our framework, and we really enjoy working with our community. So thank you, Kofi, for your uh, starter kit. We A lot of our users really enjoy that. So, and the way that we make our plugins is we have a really smart, uh, we have a really fun quote is, if it doesn't exist, just make it. And so if you find us uh, at a convention, we have a summer camp t-shirt that says that, and it's quite fun to, uh, to wear and uh, just come say hello. So how do all these plugins uh, integrate into multiple, into multiple things? Uh, the very first example that we have is that we have multi-chain integration, one framework to rule them more. Our modular system cultivates an ecosystem to have a multi-chain integration. So you can essentially hot swap and connect to multiple chains to test your contracts or decentralized apps, all in one terminal, in one project, in one session. And uh, let's uh, actually step into the code just a little bit. Um, in this section, which was right here before, uh, you can see that our high test fixture, our code snippet, is a demo uh, project made from one of our senior developer. Uh, and you can see that we start in a fixture that connects to start neck local, and then we swap into Ethereum local. And when we start the definition for uh, test multi-chain in the same test, we see that we change the context to a new resource using the with keyword and the new provider resource allow us to uh, use a different chain. So if you can see that, and uh, actually this 
this project is actually in um, our academy. So let's, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about that later, but like if you want to have sample code for all of this, it will be uh, later in a web content for you. So now that we can connect to different chains, how does this, uh, how do Pythonic tools help us with connecting to the data? Uh, a really cool use case would be query. Uh, query block uh, against uh, our base fee is a huge, uh, it's a really fun example. Um, with our Pythonic suite of tools, we can already know and love how to use it. Uh, oh, sorry, with our Pythonic tools, we can query up our, the blockchain and figure out and visualize it on a graph. So for example, we have a really cool ape console, an interactive console with our command line. And uh, with on-chain data in our interactive ape console, we can connect our Ethereum to a Ethereum mainnet. And with our Alchemy plugin, we can connect to, uh, we have a live connection to mainnet. We can query the blockchain to obtain a base fee as our X coordinates. And then as our Y coordinate, we can use our uh, base fee. And so using uh, matplotlib, we're, we're able to graph and visualize uh, this data to provide meaningful value. And this is all you know, done in one terminal, one project, and one session. And uh, this is, and with the proper use of our framework, the possibilities are pretty much endless. Let's, uh, let's go over the project formation and where every puzzle piece should go to make sure you use our framework um, effectively. So this is a project hierarchy. So you have your project uh, name, your project directory, and you have three directories, contracts, tests, and scripts. And within each of those, this is where you should place all of your relevant uh, files. And then we have a special ape config YAML to you know, direct your project as the specifications you need. Um, the contract directory, is where all the contracts go. So where all your Viper contracts, your Solidity files, or your Cairo uh, projects. Um, and contracts are basically a small block of code that interact with you know, the blockchain. Our test directory is, is a way for you to put in all your Python testing scripts that validate your contract or your project as a whole. So if you want to do integration testing, it should be written here. For example, our multi-chain integration a test that you saw earlier was written in this test folder. Um, and then lastly, our script directory is a way for us to interact uh, with the contracts or the project as a whole. And we'll go into a little bit, a little bit later to give you some like really cool examples. And so if you're looking to uh, specify your provider or your network, you do it in your ape config. And we have plenty of examples of how to do that properly. Um, so stepping into the directory, uh, the smart contracts, here is a realistic example of how your project will contain relevant files. As you can see in the red uh, box, we have our Viper and Solidity contracts underneath the contract directory. Um, and then you see in the scripts uh, directory, we have a uh, make interfaces for your Solidity file, your Solidity contract. And, um, and then you're in your test directory, you have uh, configuration tests and tests all the methods that are made in your contracts just to make sure that it works. And these test scripts will go interact with your contracts be because it's built in the same project. Uh, this picture is actually taken from a very realistic example called the ERSX46 project, which is a tokenized Vault EIP. And it's foundation. It's a foundation and building blocks for vaults that uses ERC20 tokens as representing the underlying asset in a vault, which are called shares. If you have no idea what I just said, there is a tutorial about it in our education platform. I'm happy to go over that with you. And then lastly, our script folder is a way for us to um, create management action for our projects. For example, we have, uh, if you want to deploy, um, you want to deploy your contracts in a certain way. Uh, you can write a deployment script to uh, launch in a certain order. Or if you want to ingest some sort of data, like a whitelist of address, you want to airdrop your NFTs, you can run a CSV file against your contract and then mint accordingly. Or if you want to pull off chain data, like use our favorite Chainlink Oracle to grab prices off of um, 
Coinbase. Uh, it's really easy to do that. We have a really cool example about that too. We love integrating with all of our friends in the Python community. And if there's a plugin that we don't have, let's connect and uh, let's build something cool together. And if you're curious on about how to get started or want to watch more content on important concepts and building your first Web3 project, let's finally get into the uh, academic platform that we have, we know and love. It's called uh, academy.apworks.io. This is how you can get started. Um, this is where I have focused most of my work. So if you're looking for a way to explore our framework, we have a small guide that explains the best ways and the best features of Ape. Our getting started is showing you how to install properly to uh, get your framework working in your terminal. And if you already know how to use and work with the Web3 environment, we have templates to build your um, ERC721 or 20 tokens. And um, soon our 4626 uh, tutorial will be coming out for all of that. And uh, if you are absolutely brand new, uh, we have a back to school challenge that runs through our entire roadmap from basically teaching you from zero to hero how to do everything all the way up until um, building your own NFT with your own code. You can mint it and give it to anyone you like. And uh, I like to uh, specify that all my tutorials will teach you the standardizations of the uh, project or the standardizations of EIPs that we built it around. So you understand why it's built this way and why the standards are the way they are. And uh, thank you so much for listening. I think this has been a huge pleasure to talk to you. If there are any questions, let me know. Awesome. Uh, do you want to also shout out the digital swag? I mean. Oh, yeah. We have <laughs> some really cool digital swag, I believe. Right now, it's in our GitHub. So, or not in GitHub. It's in our, in our uh, Google Drive. We have some really cool um, fancy gifts about it and then we have these really nice um, nft placements holders right here that you can use to build your own stuff so these are all the little building blocks that you can do for nft if you like the little gif in the beginning um it's essentially in the same uh format um we have a question coming in i noticed there's a test folder inside the contracts folder as yeah. well as test folder next to it is the test folder under contracts for unit tests that is a great question. Uh, the test folder will is a place where you your um, our framework will point to looking for all the tests. And if you were to look at this here, um, unit testing is done with uh, specific specifying test underscore multi chain in the same test. And yes, you can point to um, specific tests for specific contracts, and and you have the right intuition that you can nest test folders for different contracts. Awesome. Uh, we might have another question coming in. Uh, I guess my question, any alpha for uh, upcoming Ape Academy videos? We can drop the audience. Yes. Yeah, so like I mentioned, just very quickly. Um, so we have an ERC-20 uh, template that helps you build your very first ERC-20 tokens. But on top of that, uh, we have a new tutorial coming out for our 4626. And that is a really cool way to learn how to build tokenized vaults. And that should be coming out. I personally recorded that and it's coming out soon. And if you're looking to build any plugins for our ecosystem or just want to get us to look at a certain ecosystem, uh, before my tutorial, there is one going to be teaching about the ways to interact with our plugins as you, the way you should or if the way you should, like our first initialization of that. Okay, awesome. Um, so guys, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any other questions, you can meet us in the face-to-face uh, -face room. Yeah, so thank you so much. Um, I hope to meet you guys in person or another virtual event. So thank you so much for stopping by. Awesome, excellent, Chris.